So welcome to 2E1 Linear Algebra section. I'm Bill Lionheart. We're going to talk about matrices. So a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. Uh, an M by N matrix has M rows and N columns and the numbers in it are called elements. So here's a two by three matrix. It's got two rows and three columns. And here's a two by two square matrix. It's got two rows and two columns. Column vectors are just matrices with one column, so they're n rows by one column. For example, this uh, vector 2, 1, 0. We can also have row vectors. They're matrices that are one row by n columns. Here's, here's a, a, a vector with three entries, so it has one row and three columns. Generally, when we say vector, we mean column vector and we'll see why that's convenient later. In general, a uh, matrix has elements A11 up to A1n, that's the first row, so you see the second index counts the column, and then uh, they're all numbered with the, um, the row that they're in and then the column, down to AMN. So it's, it's the uh, index, the first one is the row that you're in, and the second one is the column that you're in. So A21 is in row two and column one. We're not going to do complex matrices in this course, although they're very useful in alternating current circuits. Uh, so we have real numbers, although you could, of course, have complex numbers in them as well if you want. The notation we're going to use is uh, that matrices will be capital letters, vectors will generally be lowercase Roman letters and scalars, in other words just numbers, will be Greek letters. Um, some authors and some books use bold for vectors and matrices. The elements of a vector will be used, will be denoted by the lowercase letters with subscripts. So aij, little aij, is the elements of um, big A. Okay, some special matrices. The zero matrix is just a matrix full of zero, so you can have it any shape you like, any number of rows and columns, there's a zero matrix. There's also a special matrix that um, really plays the role a little bit like one does for numbers. And that's a, a square matrix with ones along this main diagonal and zeros elsewhere. It's denoted by the letter I, capital I, which is a bit indistinct in this font. A diagonal matrix is one with non-zero numbers only on the diagonal. So for example, this matrix D has D11, D22, and D33, and all the other D something somethings uh, are zero. Of course, it can also have zeros on the diagonal, um, but it, it, it must be zero off the diagonal. The identity matrix, and indeed the zero matrix, count as diagonal matrices. Okay, what can we do with matrices? Well, we can add them, and we can multiply them by a scalar, for example, a plus 2b. We can multiply matrices by vectors and matrices by matrices, but there's a constraint on what shape they are, which we'll look at. So first of all, when are two matrices actually equal? Well, they have to be the same size, first of all, and all the elements have to be the, the correspondent in the same place. So aij is bij for every i and j that's valid. Okay, so first of all, adding matrices is easy. What we do is we just add the corresponding elements. So the A11 plus the B11 gives us an element uh, in, in the 1, 1 position. And we see that when you add matrices, you'll get a matrix of exactly the same shape. And you can only add them if they're the same shape as well, because you have to add the corresponding elements. So we can add a two by three, two rows by three columns matrix to another two by three, and the answer is a two by three. For example, three plus four is seven here. We can also add column vectors, and of course, it just follows the familiar pattern for adding vectors. If we add the zero matrix of the correct shape, the same shape as A, then of course we just get A, because we just added zero. We can multiply uh, a whole matrix by a scalar, in other words, a number, alpha, 
And we, again, we just do that element-wise. So for alpha times the matrix A, we just multiply all the elements by uh, the scalar number alpha. So 3A, where A is this matrix, we just multiply all the elements by 3. We can take what are called linear combinations. In other words, a scalar multiple uh, plus another scalar multiple. In this case, you can think of it as multiplied by minus 3. So something times this matrix plus something times this matrix. And of course, they have to be the same shape, and the answer is the same shape. The transpose of a matrix is simply the matrix written the other way up. So um, for every element Aij, you replace it by Bji. So um, the transpose of A is a matrix with the rows and columns reversed. That's very simple in, in practice. So example, this square matrix, its transpose is the same size, but what was a row, 4, 1, is now a column. And what was a column, 4, 2, is now a row. So we just swap all the rows and columns. If you transpose a column vector, you get a row vector. And it's written as a superscript T. Some authors also use dash, for example, for transpose or, or a few other symbols. If you transpose twice, you get back to where you started because you swap rows and columns and then you just swap them back. And if you add two matrices and transpose them, well, you, you can just transpose them before or after you add them because you're just adding the corresponding elements. Let's look at the dot product of vectors. You know this dot product or, or scalar product or inner product. If we're given two vectors, all we do is we multiply the corresponding elements and then we add them up, giving us a scalar answer, a number. So a dot b is a1, b1, a2, b2, and so on. So for example, if we have these two vectors, um, the dot product is 1 times 2 plus 4 times 1 plus 3 times 2. So um, that's a familiar dot product and we can also write that as a transpose times b. In other words, if we write this row, um, this row vector and this column vector, then um, we're saying that in this notation, we can multiply a row by a column, and what we do is a1 b times b1 plus a2 b2. So in other words, we just multiply the corresponding things and add them up. And this is the beginning of understanding how we multiply matrices. So we can multiply a row vector and a column vector of the same size, and it's the same as the dot product. And, and here it is in, in, the, in that notation. OK, so finally, matrix vector products. The matrix vector product of a matrix times a vector, um, first of all, we have to have the, the right size. So if we have an m by n matrix, and then a vector, that's a column vector of length n, then the answer is a column vector of length m. So it takes something of length n and gives us one of length m. And we've seen that before for um, a special case where A was actually a row vector. So the way we compute it is by taking inner products with the rows of A and X. So let's just for the moment, and um, the notation on this varies, let's call the um, uh, rows of A by A1 up to AM. And of course, if I just a1, if I think of that as a vector, then um, it transposes a row. So those are the rows in order. So there's 1 to m. And then the matrix times a vector, all it means is we take each row and dot product it with x. So of course it means that the length of the row, the number of columns, has to be the same as the number of rows of x. So that has to match, in other words, the, um, the row, the length of the row, has to be the same as the height of x. So here's some examples. Here's a, here's a matrix A and here's a vector x. 
and to multiply a times x what we do is we get the first row 2 1 3 and multiply it by 1 3 4 so that's 2 times 1 1 times 3 3 times 4 adds up to 17 here we've got 0 times 1 2 times 3 5 times 4 and that adds up to 26 and so on so each of the rows has got together with this column and then we've taken the dot product so so the answer is the column vector 17 26 11 but to save space we've written it as, as a row vector and then put transpose which is a, a, a neat trick well what's the point well uh, first of all with this definition matrices times vectors is useful for geometric operations for example um, if you want to shear something over in other words like you would push over a, a stack of paper um, then uh, that's achieved by this matrix if you wanted to rotate a vector you've got a matrix with some trig functions in a scalar factor alpha we just get alpha times the identity and to shift something and just move it we can add a vector so all those uh, operations can also be done in, in um, three dimensions and so it's handy for studying motion and uh, computer graphics but also matrices are very widely used in control theory and optimization electrical networks was one of the original motivations um, and even the google rank is a problem in matrix algebra so the way that, that google sorts things um, one of the prime examples though is simultaneous equations and if we just have this simple simul pair of simultaneous equations um, we can abstract it as ax equals b where a is just the coefficients of the x1 and x2 when they're written in order and b is the column vector 3 1 and then of course x has to be the column vector x1 x2 so it's just a way of writing this simultaneous equation as one um, algebraic object a, a x equals b